make a decision here in which way we want to go. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll go with the second one. Let's just see what happens with it since I'm already here. Let me just continue writing limit. X approaches A. Now notice, when I do distribute through with this negative sign, right, when that negative sign goes through here, it creates a plus 5 minus 5A squared plus 2A cubed. And this 5 and this 5 will cancel. So what I'm left with is 5X squared minus 2x cubed, then I have minus 5a squared plus 2a cubed all over x minus a. So at this point, what I'm going to do is try and group some stuff together on the top. Try and see if I can't factor somehow. So because I have four terms up here, let me attempt a factoring by grouping. So I'm going to split the four terms here, try and pull a GCF out of the first two. But what I see is in the first two, I can pull out an x squared. I'll be left with the 5 minus 2x. And then if I pull out you know, the second two, if I pull out an, an a squared, actually, let me pull out a negative a squared, negative a squared, I will be left with a 5 plus 2a all over x minus a. So notice what happens here. We try and group. These two things don't match, and so grouping isn't really working there. So that approach doesn't work. Now, what I can do, uh, I don't want, did not want to erase all that. Sorry. What I can do instead is try and rearrange things. 5x squared minus 5a squared uh, minus 2x cubed plus 2a cubed over x minus a. So I put my square terms side by side and my cube terms side by side. Now, out of the first two terms, I can factor out a 5. When I do that, I'm left with x squared minus a squared. On the second two, I can factor out a negative 2. And wh what I'm left with is an x cubed plus a cubed all over x minus a. All right, and then um, what I notice is that I have difference of squares here. And over here, I have the sum of cubes. So because, oh, you know what? Hold on a second. Pull down a negative. I need a negative there. Minus a cubed. Because when this negative 2 distributes back through, I need that to be a plus. So... Um, so I have a difference of cubes here. I have a difference of squares here. Remember, x squared minus a squared will be equal to um, x plus a, x minus a, and then x cubed minus a cubed is x minus a, and then x squared plus um, x times a plus a squared. These are formulas from college algebra. And notice each one of them has the x minus a that I have in the denominator that I'm going to need to cancel. So I take, this is limit, x approaches a of 5. Now here's my difference of squares, x plus a, x minus a, minus 2 times x minus a, x squared plus ax, or xa plus a squared. All of this over squeeze it in here, x minus a. And now the x minus a, since it's common in each one, will factor, could factor out and then cancel out there. So we're left with, I'll just write in red, limit x approaches a of 5 times 
x plus a, that's what's left here, minus 2 times x squared plus ax plus a squared, and then all over 1. So I don't really need to write it, but I'll put it here. And now what we do is we let x approach a. So if x becomes a, we have a plus a, that's 2a, and then multiply that times 5, so we get 10a. And then over here we have a squared plus, remember x is becoming a, so a squared plus a squared, that's 3a squared, and then multiply by this, so we get negative 6a squared, and then all over 1. So this is it. This is the slope of my tangent line, 10a minus 6a squared. Whew, that was a lot of work. Now, we need to finish the rest of the problem, but what I'd like to do is see if they used that formula or not. Hopefully, they used the, the limit with the h. Let's see. Yes, they did. Okay. So, remember, we had gotten this here. They expand this out and get this. They expand this out, get this. And then they distribute the 5 through here. They distribute the negative 2 through here. They clean all that up and they get this. And then each one of these terms has an h, so they factor it out. These cancel. This is what they're left with. They go ahead and, and let h go to 0 now, and it's left with 10a minus 6a squared. So um, I'm glad they used the other approach, because that shows you both ways. All right. Now, to answer the rest of the question, let me erase all this. Most of it, not all of it, just to clean up my, my page a little bit here. So find the equations of the tangent lines that, um, at the points 1, 8, and 2, 9. So now we have the general formula, 10a minus 6a squared. That gives the slope of tangent line at any point. So let's start with the, uh, this one here. Here, um, x is 1 and, and y is 8. So the slope of the tangent line there at that point will be equal to the x, which is really our a. Um, the formula here was 10a minus 6a squared, so it would be 10 times 1 minus 6 times 1 squared. So it's just 4. So the slope of the tangent line is 4, and then we can use the y minus y1 thing, so 8 minus, y minus 8 equals 4 times x minus 1. Remember, I'm using the point... Uh, 8 there, 1 there, and then y minus 8 equals 4x minus 4. Add 8 to both sides, and we get this. So that answer goes here. And then to do the other one, this one, first we have the slope of the tangent line will be equal to um, 10 times a, which is 2, um, minus 6 times a, which is 2 squared. So we get 20 minus, let's see, 2 squared is 4 times 6 is 24. So we get negative 4. And then we find the um, equation tangent line using the y minus y1 in this case is 9 equals the slope negative 4 times x minus x1, which is 2. Distribute negative 4 through and then add our 9 to both sides. Negative 4x, what's that, plus 17? So those are our two lines. That, that answers that. So to graph it, you can check with these, you know, which, which are which. Um, I can already tell you it's not this one because we didn't have a flat line. We didn't have a flat line. We definitely didn't have two flat lines, so it's going to probably be this one here. Let's go back over here and uh, verify everything. Where am I? No, I'm going to have to go back to this because I downloaded it. Okay, so here are the equations that we got, and that's the graph. Long problem there. Okay, if a ball is thrown into the air with a velocity of 38 feet per second, and its height and feet are given by, after t seconds, given by this equation, find the velocity when t is 1. 
So what we basically want to know is what is the, if we look at this now as like a curve, all right, and we want to know what's the slope of the tangent line at 1. That's what the velocity is. It's the, the slope of the tangent line at t equals 1. So I want to know the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. Now I'm using 1 because they wanted 1 second here. If it was 2, I would put 2 plus h and then f of 2. So this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. Now I'm replacing my t in my formula with 1 plus h. So I have 38 times 1 plus h minus 16 times 1 plus h squared. And then I subtract from that f of 1. So what would happen if I plug 1 in here? 38 times 1 is 38. And then t squared, so 1 squared is 1. 16 times 1 is 1. So I mean 16, so we get 38 minus 16, uh, which gives us 22. All right, so I got a phone ring in here. Of course, it's solicitation because I'm at home, and that's all the phone calls I ever get. And then all that over h. Okay, now I'm going to have to go ahead and distribute the 38 through here, and then I'm going to square this and then distribute a 16. So let me work that through here. This is equal to the limit. h goes to 0. I have 38 plus 38h. That's just distributing here and here. I'm going to wait to do this. I'm going to minus 16. Now, if I expand this out, 1 plus h squared, I get 1 plus 2h plus h squared. And then I still have minus 22 out here, all over h. And then I'll distribute that limit. h approaches 0. I have 38 plus 38h minus 16 minus 32h. Uh, so I just did minus 16 minus 32h minus 16h squared. And then I still had minus 22 there at the end. I'm running out of space. Definitely running out of space all over h. What you'll notice here is that 38 minus 16 is 22, but then I subtract 22. So those are gone. I have 38 h's, and I take away take away 32 h's. That's going to leave me with 6 h's. So here's where I am. Limit h goes to 0. I have, I have 6 h's minus 16 h squared all over h. Since... Uh, the numerator I have uh, h's in both terms. I can factor an h out. I'm left with 6 minus 16h all over h, and voila, I've got my cancellation. Now let h go to 0. This is going to vanish, and I'm just left with 6. So that will represent the velocity of the um, ball at exactly one second, so 6 feet per second. All right. Uh, let's see. If f of x equals 6x squared minus x cubed, fine. Um, f prime of 1 and use it to find the equation tangent line and the curve. So this is pretty much the same thing we've been doing. You know, I'm not going to go through this one because we've done so many of these. And here, here's the answer. I'll just leave it up here for you so you can see how it's worked out. You're just finding this, this right here, the derivative at 1 just means slope of tangent line. So you use that formula, plug in, cancel out an H, and then you get a, get a result. Then you create the tangent line from that. So same thing we've been doing. Same thing here. Okay, We've got a curve. Here it is. And we want to find the uh, F prime of 2, which is the slope of tangent line at 2. And I think I will show you, uh, so show you the solution to that so you can at least see how that one worked out. The algebra of this one's going to be kind of ugly. So we're going to use um, the h goes to 0 here on this one. And remember, a is 2 because of the point we're asked to look at. So we're going to be really finding this. 
when you plug 2 plus h into the function, you have to plug 2 plus h in right here and 2 plus h in right here, and that's what this is. Then you subtract f of 2, but we already know f of 2 is 2 because of the point. So that's just a 2. At this point, you have to get common denominator. So they, got, they went ahead and expanded this out and, and put all this together and got this. And then what they did is they introduced on the top here and on the bottom of the 2 that denominator. And that way they both have the same denominator. Then they put those together, distributed the negative 2 through, got everything to cancel out. Here we have an H in both terms. They factor it out. The H's cancel. They're left with this. They let H go to 0. That goes away. They have a negative 2 on top. Everything here goes away. They're left with a 6. And it reduces. You get negative 1 third. And then they come up with the equation of the tangent line using the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And there it is. And then they go and they look at the graphs and compare. So that is that one. All right, this one, same sort of thing. We're going to find the, um, it's basically saying find the slope of the tangent line at a. So they don't give you a number. So we want to use the general definition. And so you're going to replace your x here with, Right, we're trying to do f of a plus h, so you replace the x with a plus h, replace with a plus h, then you subtract from that f of a, so you replace everything here with a's, subtract the whole thing. That's why it's in parentheses. And then they go ahead and expand that out, distribute a 2, multiply negative 5 through here, 4, and then they distribute the negative sign through those three terms. Cancel things out. All the terms in the numerator have an h. Factor the h out, cancel h. And then you're left with this. Let h go to 0. All you're left with is 4a minus 5. Next one, same sort of thing. I'll let you do that yourself. This one, same sort of thing. I'll show you the work here. Here they use the other definition. Okay, they use this one. Uh, no, they're using, sorry, the same one. h goes to 0. So they have to find f of a plus h. So replace that x with a plus h plus uh, then replace the x with a. So we've got a, um, uh, some radicals, which means you introduce conjugate, top and bottom. Work all that out. Um, when you do the conjugate foiling up on top, you'll get this right here. You clean it up, you'll get this. And then you'll have that h, and that h right there will cancel. You still have that conjugate thing on the bottom, though. And then at this point, you let h go to 0 and you should work out to this right here. OK, a roast turkey is taken from an oven when its temperature has reached 185 degrees and is placed on a table in a room where the temperature is 75 degrees. The graph um, shows how the temperature of the turkey decreases and eventually approaches room temperature. By measuring the slope of the tangent, Estimate the rate of change of temperature after an hour. So what they want you to do is just look at this. This is the turkey, right? They take it out of the oven. Here it is, 175 degrees, 185 degrees. As time goes on, it starts to cool down and reach room temperature. At a specific point in time, exactly one hour late, into, you know, one hour after they take it out of the oven, they want to know how how quickly the the temperature is changing. So they don't, they, don't want, they don't want to know what the temperature is. They want to know how fast it's changing, how fast it's decreasing. So you want the slope of this, uh, this kind of reddish line here. So we need to just estimate that slope. Like what's rise over run? So you just kind of pick a point here and then maybe pick a point here. Try and figure out how much did it go down by, how much did it go over by, and then estimate it. And... Let's see what they estimated here. Yeah, okay, so they, uh, let's see. See, they're kind of guessing. They're kind of guessing. Um, they come out to negative 0.7 for a slope. Negative 0.7. So if this is, if this is 150, then it looks like really close to 150 here. So maybe that's maybe that's 148. It's 
where it was there. And then when it gets to here, it looks like maybe it's, I don't know, under two. So the rise, or actually you should say if you go down here, this is actually, um, it went down, so down by about 46 degrees. That's your rise, negative 46 degrees over your run, which is the time, and here the time is kind of obvious, that's why I picked those two points, at 60 minutes. And so I would have got, had I done this, had I done this, um, 46 divided by 60, I would have gotten negative 0.76. So I would have had a different estimate than they had, but it's the idea here that's important, all right? Okay, so same sort of thing. I'll let you work through that one yourself, except they're, t they're talking about different, uh, different points and different rates of change. So see if you can figure that one out. Um, it's all estimations, though. Okay, this is all an estimation. So see, see how you can do on that. All right, hope that helps.